Hello everyone, last night I played the Resident Evil 4 remake demo for six hours straight and in today's video I want to give my thoughts and feedback on the experience and I am aware that I am in the minority when it comes to the fan base of this game. For the vast majority of players out there, this is just going to be a great time. That is why I named the video Resident Evil 4 remake is lame and everyone will love it because now is going to be a fresh, new, bold take on this old, crappy, kind of clunky GameCube PS2 game. Now we've got brand new graphics and brand new voice acting and most importantly, brand new controls. No more of that crappy, clunky, locked to your back camera with restricted turning and restricted aiming. What the hell was up with that? Now we got full unrestricted shooting and aiming just like every other third person shooter. And isn't that wonderful? So now Resident Evil 4 plays just like Resident Evil 3, which we remade and Resident Evil 2, which we remade, and eventually, when we get the balls, Resident Evil 1, which we unfortunately already remade, so we gotta remake the remake at some point. We just gotta figure out how exactly to deliver that to people. But yeah, there's no doubt in my mind when it comes to the reviews and most of the fans, Resident Evil 4 Remake is going to be a slam dunk. Because when you talk to Resident Evil fans, some of them will even say, well, I don't really like Resident Evil 4 that much because I prefer Resident Evil 1 or 2 because they're more survival horror and 4 kind of changed it into kind of an action game, so that's not my thing. Then other people you'll talk to will say, well, Resident Evil 4 was kind of cool, but if we're being real here, isn't it all about Resident Evil 6, my brother? Especially Mercenaries mode where you get combos and machine guns and now you can play it like a full-on 3D action game. No more of that weird clunky control system. Well, for me, it is no competition. I don't really like Resident Evil 1. I don't really like Resident Evil 2. I don't really like Resident Evil 3. I love Resident Evil 4. I consider it one of my favorite games of all time and one of the greatest games of all time. Five, six, it eh, not so much. I don't think Capcom quite figured out the magic of Resident Evil 4. So in today's video, I don't want to just complain about the remake. I also want to recognize some of the qualities of the original version that I think are largely looked over and why those qualities to me are so important. So let's begin by talking about the controls because this really is the linchpin. Way back two years ago, when they originally announced they're gonna remake Resident Evil 4, even back So I could be okay with them just kind of remaking it, but they'd have to be very, very careful to be faithful to certain systems, like being making sure they're getting the hits done right, making sure they're getting the knife length right. I'm not saying it's like totally impossible that just a straight up remake would work, but they'd have to be really careful with what they're doing not to mess up, especially if they added in like modern ca camera systems and stuff like that. I think that would really throw off the feel and flavor of the game quite a bit. Before. Even back then, before I saw a single screenshot of gameplay, I knew with almost 100% confidence they would change the controls. There is no way in hell they were going to retain the original control scheme. And I'll explain why that is. Because the modern sensibility and the modern taste is that that era of action game, that era of 3D games was like cave paintings. It was like Mayan inscriptions, right? They didn't know the truth, the brilliance that is the modern control scheme that every single action game now follows. If you don't, you're just a nutbag. You're insane because the way it works is obviously you move with the left control stick. You aim with the right control stick. You shoot with the trigger buttons. 99.9% .9 of all games now do this. So the idea of having this game where the camera's locked to your back, you can't freely turn, and then you have to actually stand still and go into a special state to withdraw your gun, and you can't move while you're shooting, that is insanity. That is like people, they were stupid back then. They couldn't figure out that, oh wait, wait, you can just move and aim with two different analog sticks. That wasn't discovered in the early 2000s. So. That original control scheme of Resident Evil 4 is just outdated. That's it's just the problem with it. It just doesn't it doesn't understand how games play now. The problem with that though is that this mentality is complete bullshit. Yeah. And the reason why is because the controls, the combat, and the level design are all integrated beautifully in Resident Evil 4. Changing that control scheme changes the entire balance of the game like a domino effect. Now Leon can walk around while he aims. Why not just headshot all day, every day? What's with this whole meta of shooting people in the kneecaps? Because by the time you draw and pull your gun up, 
a lot of the times you're not going to get a clean shot on people. And also there's that whole meta and dynamic of you're trying to stand your ground, but the zombies are coming at you. So you have to strategically plant where you aim, where you shoot, all that kind of stuff. That's all out the window now. You can now just come up, put your gun right to the zombie's head and just back with them. Come on, zombie. Let's just go backwards. And I can just get my headshot, aim nice and tight while that happens. So what happens with that? Well, now the developers are sitting around thinking, okay, well, now he can aim and shoot. But the zombies are walking targets now. We can't have just the zombies walking around like a bunch of losers because now the players can just walk up and headshot them all day. So here's what we'll do. We're going to have to change the enemy design. So rather than having these kind of slow moving targets, what we're going to do is now we're going to have the zombies bum rush you. Okay. So now to battle Leon being able to shoot them in the head, we need the zombies to come at you like football players. And so now the zombies can bum rush you and the developers realize, oh, f Leon doesn't have anything to deal with oncoming tackles from zombies. In the original game, if a zombie bum rushed you and tackled you, that's because you already made the mistake way before that point. In the original game, what the zombies do is they actually kind of meander towards you. And then when they get an eye glimpse on you, they'll run in after you. They'll come in close, but then once they get close, then they kind of revert back to their zombie state and go, mm. and you got, you got time. You can figure something out. And then when they finally go into the tackle animation, they're like right on top of you. You had plenty of time to turn, move away, reposition, unless you cornered yourself, but that's your fault if you did that. In the original game, it's all about positioning and grouping. And so if you're really good at the combat in the original Resident Evil 4, like I'll show in the footage here, you can get Leon with a gun and a knife, get his back up against the wall. You can take on an entire army of zombies with just a pistol and a gun using the beat em up mechanics of the game, getting them knocked down, getting on the ground, knifing them, slashing them. All that goes out the window though, if Leon can just aim and shoot freely because the entire balance needs to change. The skill set of being able to judge the exact timing of when all this happens, that is one of the fundamental aspects of the, the gameplay of the original game. No longer, because now Leon can just kind of turn. He can see everything. I see that guy right there. I see these guys here. I don't need to turn around. Why would I turn around? Now you can back up. Now you can aim. Now you've got zombies coming at you. What do you do? What do you do? How do you deal with these zombies? Well. How about we have you duck the grabs, like a fighting game. So the zombies start to grab you, you duck them. And the reason why you have to duck them is because in the original, let's say a zombie's coming at you and trying to grab you, you can move to the side and dodge it because you have to hold still to shoot. So it's not broken to be able to sidestep zombie attacks. But in this game, because you can aim and shoot at the same time, sidestepping zombie attacks are broken. So what do they have to do? They have to have the tracking of the attacks be insane like you can't dodge this unless you turn and completely run for it basically so now you got your back against the wall you've got this onslaught of zombies coming back you the developers realize leon is fucked. he can't do shit about this other than like grenading or shooting people he can't get out of this situation on his own so we need to add more mechanics we need to figure this out okay so now leon's ducking grabs and crouch crouching around like metal gear solid okay but what about the people with the pitchforks what do we do about that because ducking the pitchfork, that's just silly. You just go right into your face. Well, how do other action games solve this problem? Like in Sekiro, what do you do if an enemy's rushing you? You parry. And of course you parry. You parry in every game now. Every game has a parry. Every game needs a parry. Now, I don't have a problem with parries in themselves in proper context if the game's built around them. But why would you take the delicious pie that is Resident Evil 4 and give Leon a parry. It's the lamest thing I've ever seen. Okay, so now Leon's parrying stuff, but then they realize, oh, shit. so now Leon can duck, he can parry. He is too good. What do we do about this? We're gonna have to balance this parry bullshit. So now he can parry stuff and he can knife stuff, but we'll add durability to the knife. That way he's not going too crazy with it. So we'll keep it kind of locked down a bit. And so now what happens <laughs> is they take away your knife if you use it too much. So in the original game, let's say you're running low on ammo. You've got a bunch of enemies coming at you. This happens quite a bit, especially if you're playing a little bit in a speed run style, because in the original game, if you want to go faster, you don't explore for bullets, right? So kind of the fun way they play original game is like uh, low ammo counts because you can just cruise through it without having to explore around all that much. 
So now you, that happens to me all the time. You're in, you're in a low ammo situation. You've basically got three shots left. You've got your back against the wall. You've got all these zombies coming at you. In the original game, you have this amazing move called the knife. You take it out and you can slash your way out of a lot of situations, way more than people realize. Even with just a few shots, you can get a guy in the knee, get him down. That opens up the, the roundhouse kick. You roundhouse kick him. You get everyone on the ground. You can just lay waste to them like the Grim Reaper, just slashing them in the throat as they're on the ground. And it is so satisfying. The hitbox on the original knife is huge. It's massive. So you can just lay waste to an entire row of people. And also, the knife can get stuns. So even if you have no bullets, but you've got some health, you can sacrifice that health for some stun and get the get the roller coaster going. So you get your back in the corner, they're coming at you, you slash at their heads, some of them will tank it, but sometimes you'll get a stumble, you get the stumble, you roundhouse kick them, you get them on the ground, and then you start, you start the chain. And you can work your way out of situations using purely your knife. In this game, because they were thinking, well, the knife parry's real good, if you end up using your knife too much, that mother <laughs> breaks. And then you've got your back in the corner, you've got no ammo, you've got no knife. You've just got your dick in your hand saying, help me for the love of God. And if you get yourself cornered too much, you, you have to run for it. And in fact, when you're reading through the little comments or tips of the game, the game will actually say, yeah, you just have to run. Like, we, we give up. You can't fight your way out of situations. And I think that is super lame. Now, is it broken? It's not broken, but it is lame. It takes such a cool and fun combat system and turns it into a game of hit and run, avoid, avoid, snipe things from a distance. It's just a, it's just a shooter. That's, it's what it is. And to put the pin on this, let's say you try to play the old school style. You try to get the headshots, you get the stumbles. Now developers have those in the game. So when you look at footage, you're thinking, oh, okay. So they, they kind of retained the original gameplay and they kind of did, except they didn't balance it at all because you get the roundhouse on a guy, the guy gets off the ground like immediately. So you don't even have time to knife him. And then also your knife durability, that's dangerous. They don't want you to play that original style of game. It is a whole new style of game, which is all about parrying and headshotting and all that kind of stuff. I mean, sure, it's fine. And I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy it, especially because it's like every other game you play. But to me, it's just lost its magic. It's now lame. It isn't fun. And the thing about Resident Evil 4 is why I kept playing it all these years over and over is there's no other game that does it the way Resident Evil 4 does it. And then on top of that, there's just a lot of really weird decisions with the combat of Resident Evil Remake. Like for example, Leon in Resident Evil 4, people always say the controls are clunky. Not at all. The controls are not clunky whatsoever. Leon is an agile mother in Resident Evil 4. He can move really well. It's just you have to understand how the movement of the game works. But his movement is very crisp, very clean. You're able to get around, stop where you need to stop, turn where you need to turn. It's actually really easy to control Leon. He controls extremely well. In Resident Evil 4 Remake, I don't know why they decided to do this other than, again, movement is too good. I think that's it all comes back to this. Because you can aim while shooting, they realize this shit is too good. <laughs> Leon is too good if he can just shoot and move all the time. So we need to not only buff the zombies and have them track and tackle you, now we also need to nerf Leon's movement. So in Resident Evil 4 Remake, I guess Leon developed some kind of drinking problem or something, but he feels horrible to control. He's clunky and stumbly. I, he's a zombie. I don't know what exactly they did to the controls, either if there's some kind of delay or some kind of inertia but he does not feel crisp. And I can prove it to you. Get out Resident Evil 4 on your PS4. Get out Resident Evil 4 Remake on your PS4. Play these opening sections back to back. It is night and day how crisp and clean Leon's movement and attacks are. And it really, really matters. Because when you're in these group situations where you got a bunch of zombies and you're trying to deal with them, you get that headshot, you move in, and you take that roundhouse kick. You get them on the ground, and you begin the Okazeme basically. But in Remake, you get the headshot and you literally like try to get in in time. And by the time you get in and get that roundhouse kick off, you've got a swarm of people around you. 
because this is a positioning based game and there's so many stupid situations in the remake where you may win the victory but you'll lose the war so you'll headshot a zombie and it takes you an hour to get over there to roundhouse him you roundhouse him while you're roundhousing him remember the zombies are much faster and they track you now so you're in the middle of your roundhouse and while you're doing that you've got five zombies just waiting <laughs> waiting for your vulnerability to end and so then they just tackle you so then you have to roundhouse and duck and run roundhouse duck and run you can't do the old school of like roundhouse get them on the ground get everyone situated and start slashing because by the time you get someone on the ground you've got five people around you and not only on top of that they get off the ground immediately they must have been watching tech and tech roll tutorials because they just bounce right back up the original you get them on the ground it's not only that you can slash them but you also can re-establish your positioning so you get the zombie on the ground you got guys here you got guys here you can kind of while this dude's on the ground you can kind of get yourself re-established and in fact you can sometimes even like pick people off get them on the ground and then if you hurt everyone just right you can get them in a formation and then just it's pure bloodbath and all with low ammo usage in the remake you can attempt that stuff but it is so risky it is stupid like if you're trying to do a speed run or a no death run of the game that style of gameplay is not going to hold up what you're going to have to do is just revert to old school shoot him in the head shoot him in the head stab shoot him in the head shoot him in the head stab and in fact the mechanics of the game encourage this because now you get like this kind of kill animation when you get him on the ground but then that takes up your knife durability so is it even worth it and on top of that remember what i was saying earlier about leon's hitboxes so on resi 4 leon he's got the big one he's got big old hitboxes his knife is massive his roundhouse kick that thing hits like a grenade it's like a bomb that goes off every time you do the roundhouse it just knocks everyone on their ass it is amazing it is satisfying in remake he's got the roundhouse but they have really trimmed that hitbox down and so that is the problem with them kind of porting over some of the elements of resident evil 4's combat you can tell they were kind of trying to do it they're trying to fit two different designs together of okay it's a third person shooter but you can do some of the cool resident evil 4 stuff but they made the resident evil 4 stuff just way too risky because they had to because in order to balance the fact that you can just walk around and headshot zombies they had to soup up the zombies so for me it's this weird in between where it's not bad it's not like a messy bad game it's just a clear step down and for what some of you may say well mark this isn't unfair because you literally just played the village section and the combat could improve and the level design could improve and all that sort of thing which is true but what made resi 4 so amazing and why i think the village section is actually a great vertical slice of the game isn't that the term journalists and people use vertical slice basically the village section of resi 4 is iconic and it is a great tone setter for the entire game and in fact the changes they make to the opening village section are pretty indicative to i think the changes that are going to come later on we'll see we'll see if my prediction is correct but if you look at the opener for the village section resi 4 which i think is one of the most iconic openings to video games of all time it's like changing the opening sequence to star wars or something the opening sequence of resi 4 is so iconic you're coming through you walk through those few trees you shoot a few birds for money you go into the house there's just the generic zombie guy he's not some special super boss he's just the very first zombie you encounter to teach you this is what you do here's a regular zombie guy you shoot him in the leg you slice him in the neck good times then you go upstairs you get the ammo you jump out the window and then you take on three zombie guys and then you proceed and it's just this really really nice arcade old school introduction into the game playing into the game it just works so well so tight so well conceived resi 4 remake the opening sucks now i remember i played it 16 15 times i know the opening really well now you come on in you got to randomly walk through some trees and there's a random dead end path just to be trolls and then you got to go around then you go into the house and now the house is like this giant mansion thing like chainsaw massacre or something so now you go into the house there's like these story sequences then you find the key you go downstairs into the basement. Boo, spooky, spooky, spooky. You're getting your survival horror spooky stuff, boys. And then, uh-oh, he's hiding in the shadows. He jumps out of the shadows. And instead of being a generic, this is a zombie enemy, now it's like this weird mini boss type zombie where it just tanks knife attacks. 
I've tried over and over to take him out with just the knife. He tanks the knife attacks, so you gotta just unload on him. Uh, he's just a big bullet sponge now. Great introductory enemy remake, right? I remember when I fought this enemy, I was like, this game's broken. This game sucks. Because I thought, okay, this must be the introductory enemy. But he, he's like a special mini boss type of enemy or something. He's a special enemy type. He's not a generic enemy. So then you go into the village and on the way to the village. Oh, remember the dog? One of the coolest aspects of the original game where you freed the dog. Your act of kindness is paid forward in the future where the dog comes back and helps you and saves you. Isn't that a really beautiful, fun little message of the game? It's like wholesome and fun. No, f that. We live in 2023. The dog's dead. F that dog. So the dog's dead. Now you go into the village and the village is such an iconic area of the original game. And I think that's why they put it in the demo. And I appreciate that they did because it taught me a lot about the game. But there's so many things about the village that you can tell they changed because they're like, no, nah, this is too broken. This is too good. Like, for example, one of my favorite rooms in the entire game is I call the safe room in the village where you go down and you turn to the right and you get your back up against that wall. There's one room in the village where there's no window. So you can get your back against the wall, you bring the chainsaw guy in. This is some professional stuff that you do in professional mode a lot. And then you can do some fun stuff with the doors and throw flashbangs and just have a good old time. What's funny is in mercenaries mode, they're like, no, 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 room, and they put a window in. <laughs> and then in remake, they're like, yeah, we're gonna go with the mercenaries mode version. So now there's a window in it in the remake. Just overall, everything about the game feels kind of spongy and sludgy and it works and it's balanced, but it's not, fun it's not as awesome it's not as visceral and cool as the original and then one last topic i want to talk about before i end my little rant here are the graphics because i can see this being the main defense of the existence of the remake or the main reason people pick up the remake is because yeah maybe you have somewhat of a point that the gameplay of the original might might be better maybe maybe but you got to talk about the graphics right i mean the original that that shit came out on the gamecube it looks like old compared to the graphical style of the new which is all lush and you know there's ray tracing and ambient occlusion and whatever else digital foundry loves so much but for me even if it visually looks higher fidelity or whatever i don't like the change in the graphical presentation or in the art direction of it i really like the original's art direction a lot and i think it's better the original has this kind of darker emptier colder feel to it and the remake you come in and everything's like hot and musty and bloody and jungly it just feels way more generic it feels like every other resident evil game where four felt so distinctive with the gray skies and the gray clouds and everyone's kind of cold and abandoned and ghost town i mean the village section of the original is so iconic in many ways i, I think the change in the graphical presentation of it wasn't all that compelling either It'll be interesting to see what they do with the castle because the castle is also really, really cool in the original, but I'm not a huge fan of the graphical change. That's not a big selling point for me. And what happened to our boy Leon, by the way, because Leon got beat by the ugly stick or something in the remake. And the funny thing was, is apparently he's based on some kind of like actor or whatever. And they show pictures of the actor, the actor guy, he, he looks cute. He's fine. He looks like, yeah, that, that could work. But whatever happened in the transition of making the actor into the character in the game, I mean, look at how handsome the original Leon is. And he's like one of the very few, I'd say like attractive, handsome male characters in gaming. Leon Kennedy, I mean, yeah, can't go wrong there. But you get the new remake, Leon. He, he looks like he got hit by a car, his face. There's something wrong with his face. It looks, looks bad and also, and maybe it's just me, but I also really miss the haircut and the highlights of the original Leon in Resident Evil 4. Now he just has generic blonde hair with generic blonde hairstyle. I don't know. I, I like the idea that Leon, he's like this special forces badass, but he's got a little bit of like a pretty boy side to him. I, he's just such a cool character in the original and so stylish with his jacket and everything. They didn't like butcher him or anything in the remake, but I just don't think it looks nearly as good or as iconic. And that's kind of my final conclusion of Resident Evil 4 remake is I don't think it's an atrocity. I don't think it's a piece of garbage. I don't think it's bad or anything like that. I just think it's a step down and a step down that wasn't needed or required. If this was just a purely artistic decision, why would you try to remake four? Why wouldn't you remake five or six? I mean, those games need a remake. 
in terms of their quality. Four is just too tight, too good, too well put together. And you can tell the developers like are probably tired of just remaking games at this point because with four, they're like, hey, let's try to add new stuff. But it's like, you don't add stuff to a masterpiece like this. It, it doesn't work out super well. It's like, well, why don't I add some scenes to The Godfather? Why don't I add some scenes to Lord of the Rings that I think could be good? This whole remaking thing is a really nasty paradox because the games that need to be remade the most, Resident Evil 6, for example, are the games that they're least likely to remake because the audience and buy-in isn't as much there. They actually have to put a lot of work in on their end to get people to invest in that. They have to convince people, okay, six was kind of meh, but we're going to improve it. You should check out the improvements we do. That's not the meta. Let's take stuff that people already are really interested in and love. Final Fantasy VII, Resident Evil 4, I'm sure many, many more are going to come. And let's just redo it, but worse. And I can talk about how I was a kid and I played Resident Evil 4 and it was my dream to remake Resident Evil 4 one day. I, I don't understand this. This is part of the press and this comes up with a lot of these remakes and reboots and stuff is a lot of the staff or a lot of the actors or whoever is involved will say, I'm such a big fan of it. And it's just a dream come true to remake the game. These stories don't land with me at all because I'm a big fan of Metal Gear Solid 3. And if in some kind of crazy turn of events, I ended up working on the Metal Gear Solid 3 reboot, I'd be saying, well, what are we actually seriously thinking we're going to improve Metal Gear Solid 3. We're going to do it. We haven't made anything of merit on our own, but here we are. We're going to redo the masterpiece and do it better than the original version. I feel like a fraud. What I would prefer is to say, okay, I'm here. We're working on Metal Gear. Let's work on a game inspired by Metal Gear Solid 3 that has a lot of the elements that I like, but is doing something that is unique that isn't going to cluster up the original. And you may say it's silly, but from now on, when I say Resident Evil 4, now I have to say, oh, I mean Resident Evil 4, the original, released on the GameCube. Or, oh no, I mean Resident Evil 4, the remake, which I find pretty weird, but at the same time, I know that a lot of people don't really view video games as pieces of art in the same way as other mediums are pieces of art. So. The idea of like it being artistically disingenuous to remake a masterpiece. The idea of video game remakes is like a software update. Basically, it's like so Resident Evil 4 was Windows 95 and Resident Evil 4 remake is Windows 10 or whatever. Right? That, I think that's how a lot of people view these remakes rather than you know, Resident Evil 4 is the Godfather. And now we're going to make Godfather the reboot. I think that's a good analogy for how I feel about it. but. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm not saying Resident Evil 4 Remake is a bad game or anything like that, or you shouldn't buy it or whatever. But I'm sure for the vast majority of people, like I'm saying, it's gonna be worth your time and worth picking up. So for me, my interest in the game has simmered since playing the demo. I might pick it up when it comes out just to talk to you all about it. That'll probably be a bit of a bittersweet experience where I can see it being kind of touch and go, where it can be kind of fun at times, and I get kind of frustrated and be like, oh, this is lame at other times. But overall, it's not like this big, massive deal to me, like, oh, this ruined my childhood, or this is an abomination that should be eviscerated from the world or anything. I think a more healthy attitude towards it is like, it's kind of like a lame reboot. You know how many lame reboots come out now? We don't have to go into a big tailspin about them and whatever hashtags, what you need to do. It's just kind of a step down. And I think in the future, the original Resi 4 will still outshine this bad boy in about 10 or 12 years. And I think right now there's gonna be this big hype bubble for Resident Evil 4 Remake and everyone's so jazzed about it for the next few months. But then everyone will move on and in time, the original Resi 4, because it's so unique, so well made, so polished, a masterpiece, I think in time that will absolutely outshine this remake anyway. 10 years from now, people will kind of look at this remake like more of a symptom of the times now versus like this great refresh of this old outdated classic. I think that mentality isn't gonna go on much longer. And I think games like Resi 4 are gonna start getting recognition, not just for being trailblazers in terms of whatever graphics, but also in terms of their actual combat controls and level design. I think developers hopefully are gonna start to rediscover the merits of this stuff and appreciate it more and realize with maybe a bit more humility, okay, maybe changing the fundamental combat of the game 
is going to radically shift the level design, which is going to radically shift the feel of the game, which is going to essentially make it a different game. So why don't we just make a different game at this point? Hopefully we see that coming. Maybe we won't. But anyway, those are my thoughts on Resident Evil 4 Remake. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100-100, accepting Panda, Admiral Coconut, Alexander Pfeiffer, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, Arrow Viper, Bo, Ben, Beetle Dames, Borgie22, Brian Shiver, Chase Palumbo, Chattel Maltese, Chris Yuzufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Clammy Coyote, Coast, Color Boy, CookSan666, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Danchi, Darren Griffin, Dave Hansen, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, Fantaside, FCK, Francisco, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Haosu, Jake Ryan, JLab, JBRPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Khalil Reedy, Contain, Kraz the Boys, K Horse, Larage, Malaise, Metal Leary, Maz, Megadeth 859, Minung, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Mitchell Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, Neon Dagger Games, Oklo Kugels, Philip Mason, Psycho Blizzard, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf 015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw STG, Shmop Junkie, Sarah Pong, Steve Fiction, Street Magic, Super Funk, Hamzarian, Takiro Mucho, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, Tiram, Sugumo, 2YU, Twilight EX, Unicoi Roots, Big Viper, Waggy Legs, Expect, Boghog, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.